Well, that was great worship uh, tonight. And I pray that uh, you enjoyed uh, worshiping the Lord with us, uh, with our praise team. That was uh, great for us to lead, for them to lead us in worship that way. So tonight we are talking about the fruit of the Spirit. The season that we are in here at Cottonwood is about the fruit of the Spirit. And you will notice that the Bible doesn't say the fruits of the Holy Spirit or the fruits of the Spirit. It says the fruit of the Spirit because it's one fruit that has nine segments within it. And we are going to read from Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. This is where the Bible talks about uh, the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such there is no law. So the Bible gives us nine different uh, segments of this fruit of the Spirit that we are talking about. The fruit of the Spirit uh, is the embodiment of the character of Jesus Christ. When you look at Jesus Christ and see his character, you find that uh, Jesus uh, that Jesus has these qualities within him himself. He has this fruit of the Spirit within himself. That's love. And the Bible tells us that God is love. So when we have uh, love within us, we are going to produce the characteristics of God. And so it also talks about joy. A, a believer's life must be governed by the joy of the Lord. In fact, the Bible says the joy of the Lord is my strength. Then it's talking about peace. We need peace in the world today. When you look at uh, the writings of Paul the Apostle, usually he started with uh, peace, grace from God the Father, and peace be with you. So he always invoked to his readers um, uh, peace, because you need the peace of God in order to do things in this life, in order to think properly, in order to make uh, intelligent decisions, you need peace of mind and you need peace. And so Paul always talked about grace being with you, grace and peace. Now, grace is, is something that helps us as human be beings to do that which is impossible to do. Because when you look at, uh, for instance, Paul himself, as he's uh, an example, as he was writing to the, uh, to the Philippians, you will notice that uh, he was writing that letter from jail. He was incarcerated and he was writing a letter about joy uh, because the Christian character or the Christian life is not governed by what is happening in our lives. It is governed by the Spirit of God that God has given to us. And the Spirit of God comes in us to be able to produce, to be able to produce uh, uh, the, the fruit of the Spirit. Faithfulness is what we are talking about today. And for us here at Cottonwood, we are celebrating the 140th anniversary of the church and also 20 years anniversary of us being in our current campus here in Allen, Texas. And so we have seen the faithfulness of God. In all these years, God has carried the church from one degree of growth to another, from glory to glory. And so today we can be able to look back and celebrate the faithfulness of God, that God is faithful. Faithfulness starts from inside the believer who yields to the word of God. So if you and I are going to be faithful to the Lord, 
or, or faithful to other people, we must be able to yield ourselves and follow the dictates of the Word of God. Because without the Word of God building faithfulness in us, it is very difficult for us to be faithful. Because God becomes our, our guide in producing faithfulness. And I want us to understand when we talk about the fruit of the Spirit, it's not inherent within us like a, a check mark where you say, now I have faithfulness in my life, or, or now I have full love. Now, But it's a walk with God. We keep on building on the little love that we, we have. We keep on building as we yield ourselves to the Lord. Because the flesh will always pull us down. It will always bring us down. And so I want us to understand that faithfulness is an ongoing uh, thing in our lives. We have to remain faithful constantly. Only God is faithful from uh, generation to generation. Only God has faithfulness that is never broken. And so uh, I want us to understand that. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27, he's talking about the body, how the body would want to do its own thing. He says, no, I struck a blow to my body and make it my slave. In other words, I want my body to obey me so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. In other words, Paul is saying, I want to preach what I live. I want to preach to others what I live. But the body sometimes can stand in the way of us being faithful to follow what we believe or to follow the faithfulness in our spiritual lives. And so Paul says, I bring my body under my subjection. I, I strike a blow to my body so that it can obey me. So that faithfulness is not just something that appears today and disappears tomorrow. But so that when I put my body under as a slave to obey me, then faithfulness will be able to, I will live faithfully to the Lord every day of my life. So each segment of the, uh, the fruit of the Spirit, here we are talking about faithfulness as one of the segments. Each, each of the segment of the fruit of the Spirit is just as important as others. We need to produce fruit, the fruit of the Spirit as a whole. In other words, every part of the uh, fruit of the Spirit we must be able to give ourselves to the Spirit so that He produces those, uh, uh, those uh, uh, segments within us. Love, uh, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All these things must be produced in us as believers. But as we... As, uh, as we look at the word, Paul writes to Titus in cha Titus chapter 2, verse 11. And this is where he talks about the grace of God. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. In other words, in order for us to produce the fruit of the Spirit in us, we must be able to do it by the grace of God. The grace of God will empower us to be faithful. The grace of God will cause us to remain faithful to the Lord and to every word that we speak to other people, the promises that we make. It says here, it teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled lives upright and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
So what the Bible is telling us today is that because of the grace of God, we will be taught how to live godly lives in Christ. And so as we are being taught how to live godly lives in, in Christ, we start to produce the fruit of the Spirit we start to see that by the grace of God that he has given to us, like I said in the beginning, that Paul always invoked the, bless, the grace of God upon his readers. Whenever he wrote, he says, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father. Because it's only by grace, by the power of the grace of God, teaching us to say no to ungodliness that we will produce the fruit of the Spirit and therefore we will be faithful to the Lord. Now, when we, we look back, because the Bible starts by saying in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, it starts by saying, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, and so on. So, but connects us to something else. Before Paul talks about the fruit of the Spirit, he talked about the works of the flesh. And he mentions the works of the flesh in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 19. And uh, up to 20, he talks about different things that the flesh would want to do. But here in Titus, the Bible tells us that the grace that God gives to us, it teaches us to say no to those works of the flesh. It teaches us to overcome the works of the flesh, like Paul says, to put our bodies under the subjection of our spirit or our soul. So by the grace of God, we are able to attain, the, 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 we are able to acquire the fruit of the spirit in us. And this is a daily walk with God. We have to consistently remain in fellowship with God. We have to consistently pray. We have to consist consistently study the word of God, memorize the word of God, and practice the word of God in order for us to be, to be able to see a consistent manifestation of the fruit of the Spirit. In 1 Corinthians, sorry, let me, let me just go back there. God's uh, the number, uh, uh, I want to give you some points here. Number one, God's nature is faithfulness. When you look at God, God, the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9, that God is faithful. God is faithful faithful. And this is consistent. At any given time, God is faithful. He says, God is faithful who has called you into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. So God is constantly uh, uh, faithful to his promises, faithful to his word, you can be able to rely on the word of God because God will stand to fulfill the word, his word because his nature is faithfulness. Number two is that God is faithful to forgive and keep us from evil. God is faithful to, to forgive and to keep us from evil. So God will always remain faithful in doing that. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, we read, If we confess our sins, that is an action from us, we confess our sins, we are sorry about our sins, we confess our sins, He is faithful. There we go again. He is faithful to forgive us 
and to, to just forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So in, in looking at us and our sins, because we live in, to, in this world, we commit sin every day of our lives and we, our sin is always at our doorstep. And so, but God says, if we confess our sins to God, God is faithful. He is faithful to be able to do what he promised to do. Faithfulness simply means he will stand by his word and do what he says he will do. And so God wants to produce the same kind of character within us, faithfulness. The Bible tells us in Proverbs, uh, it says, uh, uh, every man proclaims his faithfulness, but a faithful man who can find. So it is hard for us many times to find ourselves being faithful. Many times we are not faithful to our partners. We are not faithful to, uh, in terms of marriage partners. We are not faithful in the, in the work that we do wherever we work. Sometimes we do it with eye service. If the boss is not around, we will do whatever we want to do. And so we don't do it faithfully as unto our employers. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 3, the Bible says, But the Lord is faithful. But the Lord is faithful. What will he do? He will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. There is the love of God for his people, his children. It says, the faithfulness of God, because God is faithful, he will protect us. He will strengthen us. He will protect us from the evil one. Why? Because God is faithful. He doesn't want us to fall to our faces. He doesn't want the enemy to take advantage of us. So he will be able to shield us because he's faithful. He's made promises to us. He has said to us, he will never leave us nor forsake us. And so he will be there each day and each moment of our lives. Ladies and gentlemen, or oh, 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 boys and girls, whoever is watching, I want you to understand that God will always protect his own because he's faithful. He's given promises and he has to be able to uh, make those promises come to pass because he cannot deny himself. He is faithful. In uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, I like this verse of scripture. He says, uh, no temptation that has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. So everybody will be tempted the same. No temptation will be, will be something that is beyond our humanness. He says, and God is faithful. There we go again. God is faithful. So his faithfulness causes him to do the things that the Bible says he will be able to do. He says, he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. So the faithfulness of God will cap your temptation that it will not go beyond your strength. So whatever temptation or whatever trial you are going through, I want you to understand that God will be able to cap that, not beyond your strength. He will only allow the, the temptation to come to you. And let me say, God does not tempt us, but the devil always tempts us and tries us. And so God will cap that temptation. He will cap that trial so that it doesn't go beyond what we are able to bear as his children. But he says, but when you are tempted meaning every one of us at one time or the other will be tempted. And so, but the word of God says, but when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. He will provide a way of escape. 
So whenever temptation or trials come to us, because of the faithfulness of God, he will cap that trial, he will cap that temptation that we are able to bear it. We are able to overcome it. Why? Because we are more than conquerors. Jesus Christ conquered the enemy. And so we only enforce the victory that Jesus wrought on the cross. So none of us can say the devil made me do it because God will not allow it. He is faithful to be able to control whatever temptation or trial that come to us. And always there is a way of escape. God will always provide a way of escape. So if you are going through your trials today, you are going through some temptation in your life. I want you to understand because of the faithfulness of God, that temptation, that trial, is capped up to your strength. God will never allow you to be tempted beyond what you can bear. That is the faithfulness of God. Number three, I want us to understand God can be trusted because of his faithfulness. God can be trusted because of his faithfulness. Now, the whole thing about our journey with the Lord is actually based on the faithfulness of God, what God has said in his word. Jesus said it this way, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So in order for that word to make sense to us, God must be faithful that he will fulfill whatever promise he has made to us. And so Numbers chapter 23 and verse 19 tells us that God is not human, that he should lie. So whatever God says is true. If God gives us a promise, he will stand by it to be able to bring it to pass for us. The only thing that we have to do as his children is to believe what the word says and to act upon it. And God is on the side of fulfilling his promises or his word in our lives. The Bible says God is not human that he should lie. Not a human being that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? What this scripture is telling us, ladies and gentlemen, is that when God speaks, he will also act. When God tells us something in his word, all we have to do is to believe his word. And he will bring it to pass. Why? Because he is faithful. His name is faithfulness. And if he makes us a promise, God will be able to fulfill that promise. That is what makes uh, Christianity exciting. Because we don't believe things that are just up in the air. We believe things that God has said he will bring to pass. We can walk in, uh, in different authorities or in different victories in our lives because we know that whatever God says to us will definitely come to pass. So God says, um, wherever two or more of you are gathered, there I am in the midst of you. Whenever we gather together, two of us as Christians, as children of the Lord, there he is in the midst of us. And he has promised he will never leave us nor forsake us. The devil would like us to believe that God is not with us because yesterday we sinned against God. I got good news for you. The Bible tells us if we confess our sins, God is faithful. There is no sin that God will not forgive uh, us of. He will forgive 
when we confess before him. Why? Because he is faithful. Psalm 81 and verse 1 says, I will sing of the Lord's great love forever. With my mouth I will make your faithfulness known through all generations. Another version says, I will sing of the mercies of God forever. With my mouth I will make known thy faithfulness to all generations. He is faithful. He will always be faithful to fulfill his word in us. Maybe you're struggling today. You are in need and you are wondering. I want you to take a step. Go to the word. Find the promises of God. Maybe find two, three verses of scripture that you can bring before God. That God, this is what you have said in your word. And I'm standing on this word based on your faithfulness to be able to bring to pass your promises. And God will be able to meet you at the very point of your need because God is faithful. Number four, what about when we are faithless? Our faith, faithlessness cannot make God lose his faithfulness. We may not believe his word. We may think the word that we are reading was just for the apostles, will, was, will just work for the apostles. But let me tell you, even when we doubt his word, God will still remain faithful to what he has said. He cannot deny himself as we read in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 13. It says, if we are faithless, he remains faithful. You may not believe his word today. You may think that uh, the words that are written are not for our generation, that God does not perform miracles anymore. You may believe all that, but let me tell you, God will still be faithful to his word to bring it to pass. Why? Because the Bible tells us Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever meaning that the same things that Jesus was able to do yesterday or during the time he was on earth, he is able to do them today and now, and he will do them tomorrow because he's, he is faithful. God will always stand by his word because of his faithfulness. He is faithful to do what he has promised he will do. Now, God's desire for all of us is that his children will take up his character and also be faithful. The Bible says, bad company ruins, bad company ruins good morals. In the same way, good company will always boost or, or elevate good morals. And so as you and I spend time with God, his character starts to rub up on us when we spend time in prayer because he's made an invitation to us. He says in, in Jeremiah, is it uh, Jeremiah 33 verse 3? He says, uh, call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. So he makes an invitation for us as his children to call on him, to be able to pray. And these things that I'm talking about, faithfulness or the whole fruit of the spirit will manifest itself in us when we are spending time with our God. In fellowship with God, praying. In fellowship with God, reading his word as his children. Number five, we are called to faithfulness, to walk faithfully before the Lord our God. First Corinthians chapter four, verse two says, now it is required 
that those who have been given a trust or who are stewards must prove faithful. God wants his children to be faithful because uh, you, you carry a strong character if you walk in faithfulness. If you are a man or woman of your word, when you speak your word, you make a promise, you will stand by it to fulfill it because you were created in the image of God. So the very likeness and image in God, God is faithful. He will make us faithful. Sometimes we will fail to be faithful. But thank God, even when we fail, there is grace for us to be forgiven, to be given another chance. A righteous man, the Bible says, falls seven times and seven times he rises up. So the faithfulness of God causes us to rise up. He wants us to be faithful when we uh, take care of his business or other people's business. Proverbs 3 uh, to four, the Bible says, let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Two things that the uh, Proverbs tell us, this scripture tells us. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Walk in love and you will be faithful. Because when you walk in love, you would not want to disappoint the people that you love. So you will remain faithful. When you walk in love for God, you will be able to make sure you walk in faithfulness before God. I want to point out some, about three things out there about faithfulness. Faithfulness must start in little things. Many times us as believers, that's why we tell uh, uh, little lies here and there, because we feel this is a small thing. But God, God's, uh, God's desire is that we as his children will be faithful in little things. Luke chapter 16 and verse 10 tells us, whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. So to God, it doesn't matter uh, how little something is. He requires us, he wants us to be faithful. If we made a little promise here, uh, he requires us to fulfill that promise in order for faithfulness to manifest itself in us. And it also says, and whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. That's how, how God looks at faithfulness in little things. Can you be trusted in little things? Can you be trusted in little things? And many times, faithfulness, we can judge our faithfulness by what we do when nobody is watching, when nobody is present. How will you handle a situation? Will you still be faithful to God? Or are we only faithful to God when there is somebody watching us? B, number two. Faithfulness is developed through obedience to God. The word of God is the basis or the foundation on which we build faithfulness. Because God, we see God being faithful. And so we desire to be like our Father in being faithful. So in order to develop faithfulness, we must be able to obey the word of the Lord. Walk in obedience before God. Colossians chapter, Colossians chapter 3 and verse 23 says, Whatever you do, wake at it with all your heart, 
do it with all your heart as working for the Lord. Whatever you do, do it with all your heart like you are working for the Lord. Whether we are doing business on behalf of our, our employer, do it like you are working for God. Whether we are doing something, nobody's watching, you know, you're a contractor, you are repairing things instead of fixing things the right way, you do it because they will not notice you do it in a crafty way. But God says when you do everything that you do, do it with all your heart as unto the Lord, not for human masters. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. You may be in a job or in college, you are there serving our God. You will develop faithfulness in your life the moment that you always remember that whatever you do as a child of God, you and I must do it as unto the Lord. Whether it is uh, welcoming people into your life, people that you don't know, people of no, no status in society, you do it as you are like you are welcoming the Lord. You love them like you love the Lord. God wants us to live our lives in that way, that everything that we do, we do it as unto the Lord, and therefore by so doing, we develop faithfulness in us. And the last thing I want to say today is that faithfulness is always rewarded. God rewards faithfulness. In Matthew chapter 25 and verse uh, 21, the Bible says, His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. This is a scripture that is brought out of uh, a story how a, an employer left his, uh, his workers with different talents and they traded those talents and made more like the guy who was given five talents, he made five more. The guy who was given two, he made two more. And these two were recommended. And this is what the master said to them. You have done well. You are good and faithful. And so he rewards them by putting them in charge of many things, even though they accomplished just little. That's the reward they get from their master because God rewards faithfulness. Maybe you are here tonight and you are you are with us in this congregation or you are watching by way of, uh, of uh, social media, I want to encourage you to be able to allow the Spirit of God produce faithfulness within you by allowing you to dig into the Word and from the faithfulness of God be able to accomplish faithfulness in your life. How faithful are you in your marriage? How faithful are you to your children? How faithful are you to your friends? How faithful are you to your employer? God is able to help us be faithful in every area of our lives. May God bless you as you go live a life of faithfulness both to the Lord and the people around you. Let me pray before we leave. Our God and our Father, we are so grateful that you are able to teach us to live a life of faithfulness to you. We thank you, Lord God, that you, you yourself are faithful. The promises that you have made to us, you stand by them and you fulfill them when we believe them. And so we pray that, O oh God, the same characteristics of, 
of God, of you, our Father, be seen in us. As we allow the Holy Spirit to produce this fruit in us, especially what we have talked about today, faithfulness. We've seen your faithfulness in this church. And therefore, we pray that you will help us to also, in return, be faithful to you and to the people around us. Help us to be faithful to do the work of the ministry. Help us to be faithful in our prayer, in our fellowship with you. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen. God richly bless you. Shalom. It was good to be with you.